Here we go with part two now of our look at the informative speech. We've already talked about finding the topic and some of the different ways that you can put this together. It can be done chronologically, it can be done spatially, it would not be done logically. That's something you would use with a persuasive speech. We also talked about the difference between persuasive and informative speeches. All right, today we're going to talk a little bit about the body of the speech, the conclusion, and also uh, things like sources and how to cite sources. We'll get into uh, looking at note cards, and uh, we will also do that uh, in more detail when we get together next Friday for uh, our second speech, our narrative speech. First of all, though, today we're going to talk about the body of the speech. Uh, for this, when you get your topic picked out and you get your thesis uh, set, then you're going to pick at least two and possibly three main points that are going to support your thesis statement. So we have selected the topic, we've selected the thesis statement or central idea, now we're going to select main points. And what you're wanting to do is make sure that you have plenty of time uh, to fully explain and elaborate each main point. So when you're deciding on whether you're going to do two or three or four main points, be sure to look at the time that's allotted for this exercise and, uh, and how much discussion is going to need to be involved on each main point. Now with each main point, you're going to want at least one to two sub points. And remember, the sub point supports the main point. The main point supports the central idea or the thesis. The sub points do not directly support the thesis. It's subpoint supports main point, which supports thesis statement. You want to keep your language organized and your ideas simple so that it helps you to move more clearly and, and easily through your speech or your presentation. Sources. As you look for sources for this speech, uh, it must have, uh, as we've already said, and I believe this shows this in the uh, PowerPoint that I sent you earlier, three outside sources of information is minimum and at least two of those must be a printed source. That can be a news magazine, uh, a newspaper, a book, a brochure. These magazine articles, uh, books, those can be re uh, retrieved online, but we're looking here for sources that originate from either a magazine publisher, a newspaper, book publisher, that sort of thing, so be sure that we have that. Uh, no more than one encyclopedia reference. I'm really looking for you to do some research, some digging here. Get out and pull out a Newsweek or a Time magazine or a Sports Illustrated or a Popular Science or some other magazine and get your story from that. Uh, use personal experience. Radio, television interviews, TV specials, that sort of thing. Uh, again, we have faculty on campus. If you are talking a, a subject that deals maybe with nursing industry or nursing education, there are nursing professionals on campus that I'm sure would be quite willing to sit down with you for 10 or 15 minutes and do a quick interview, and they could be used as a source inside your, uh, your speech. Uh, citing your speech. Now, one thing that we want to make absolutely certain that we do in these speeches where you are using other sources of information is to cite the speech. And what do I mean by citing the speech? Well, as you go through and you are saying, for example, I would say you want to talk about something about nursing and you give a definitive statement or you have your main point here saying that nursing, uh, uh, people in the nursing profession are required to do this. Who says? Is it an article that you're quoting? If so, you need to cite the name of the author of the article and the year in which it was published. Let's say the article was published in June of, of last year. Well, you're going to cite the writer or author uh, in, his, in his or her uh, Newsweek article of June 2010 said X. So you're, every time you come up with a new source or a new citation, you're going to name the author, the year that it was public, that the article was published. In uh, one other thing to add to, the the name of the magazine or the name of the journal or the name of the book in which this particular piece of information was published, and then give the quote. So it's name of author, date, publication that it was, uh, the name of the article and the publication etc etc we get all of that information in so that we understand where this information came from and it's it seems like this is a lot of work but remember this makes your speech much more credible 
because you are using outside sources. You are proving that you have done your homework and that you know what you are talking about. Also, you are giving credit to the person who wrote the original article. Uh, another thing you're going to want to do when you're citing your information is to create note cards with those citations on them. And the reason for doing that is if you try to put too much information on your outline, you can get lost. So in addition to your outline, which has your your introduction and your thesis statement and your main points and sub points and your summary, you want to create note cards. And we'll take a look at some examples of those this week, or this next week when we all get together in class. But what you want to do is on each note card for each reference, each source of information, put that information I was just telling you about. Put the author's name, put the date, put the name of the article, the name of the publication, and then write out the quote on the card. So that when you get to the point in your speech where you need that information, you have it readily available on the card, you can pull the card up, talk about or read the information from it, lay it down, and then be ready to use your next card. Now, that should take care of going through all of the information that is in your speech. And again, then we go to the summary or the conclusion. And we talked about this in the past. The only thing you want in the conclusion is to take information that you have already presented and summarize it or restate it. You do not want to add new information into the summary. So we go from the body into the summary. You're going to wrap things up, restate your thesis, and and, and conclude. That is the end of the speech. Now, again, we will talk about all of this when we get together. If there are any questions uh, next Friday, we can go through this. We can take a look at note cards. We can talk about source citations and that sort of thing. And remember, with this particular speech, you are going to want a reference page or a bibliography sheet that will go along with the outline sheet. And with that, you are going to want to list all of the sources that you are citing in the speech alphabetically by the author's last name and each citation will have the author's last name or the author's name again by the last name first then the year the publication came out the name of the article or the name of the story then the name of the publication whether it's time newsweek popular mechanics somebody's book etc uh, so each, each one of these sor sources will have this particular citation. And if you have only three sources, you only need three of them on your reference sheet. If you have more than one source, then you will have multiple citations on the reference sheet. We'll go through all of this, and again, we're, t we're doing this a little early. I realize that the informative speech doesn't come up for uh, another three or four or five weeks, but I want to give you time to begin your research and your preparation because this speech is a little more detailed and we want to make sure that we have plenty of time to get it done. We'll see you next Friday. Hope your week's going well.